things that I have been doing to get my body prepared for labor. So it helps me sleep phenomenally and keeps me from having to get up in the middle of the night and pee. When our ligaments are twisted or tight on the uterus, it does not allow baby to properly settle down into the optimal birth position. So it's gonna look crazy, especially at the end of pregnancy when you have that big old belly. Just kind of settle in and get ready to meet him during birth and labor. Hey y'all, so today I'm gonna to be sharing with y'all 10 things that I have been doing to get my body prepared for labor. So if you've been following along, you know I'm pregnant with our third child. I am in the third trimester. I'm right at 31 weeks pregnant. So we're still a little bit of ways out from having baby, but I believe that all of these things are more effective when done earlier in pregnancy and routinely in pregnancy. They're gonna be much more effective at helping labor progress more smoothly, helping baby get into optimal position. So the sooner you can start these things, the better is my philosophy. So I'm sharing you those things with y'all today. So as always, I'll have links for all of these things I'm referencing in the description box below if you want to do further research on any of them. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I post two new videos every week on motherhood topics, pregnancy topics, natural living. So please subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. So first and foremost, always consult with your care provider before doing any of these things. This is never medical advice. This is just things that have helped me in past pregnancies and in this pregnancy for an easier pregnancy, more comfortable pregnancy. Jumping right in, first thing, number one, staying active. So this was much, much easier in my first pregnancy because I didn't have any other children. I was able to walk up and down the driveway two to three miles a day was able to exercise tons and tons of good pregnancy exercising routines, did tons of yoga. Now in my last pregnancy and this pregnancy, things are a little bit different because last time I had a toddler, now I have two toddlers. So exercising and staying active, it looks a little bit different these days, but I try to move my body in some way every day, whether it be a 10 to 20 minute workout, just playing outside in the yard with my kids, walking around our property, working in the garden, pulling weeds, just staying active, not sitting on the couch all day. If you're a mama of toddlers, you know that you are not ever really sitting, so it's not that hard to stay active and keep your body moving. The main thing here is just don't lounge around all day. Baby will settle into improper position and we do not want that. Another way I stay active is by doing my spinning babies stretching routine, which I'll talk a little bit more about throughout this video. If you've been around, I'll talk about spinning babies all the time. I'm a huge advocate for doing spinning babies exercises during pregnancy, all throughout pregnancy. And that's just another thing I add in to keep my body active every day. Number two, avoiding a reclining position. So if I'm sitting on the couch, I really try not to lean back. I try to keep my posture forward or I lean over on a pillow or I do lay down sometimes. But the main thing is we don't want our bodies reclined backwards because what's happening then is baby will gravitate to the path of least resistance. So we're leaning backwards. Gravity is gonna allow our baby to kind of push its head down towards our tailbone. And that's okay for a short amount of time, but when we're in that position for long amounts of times, so we're on a long car ride, we're just not holding optimal posture, we're kind of leaned back, baby's head will gravitate towards our tailbone, which can cause all sorts of discomfort in pregnancy. And if baby kind of settles into that position and ligaments get moved around, our body's just not holding a good shape, posture, baby will grab it back there and it will make labor much more difficult. It will cause back labor pain, just lots and lots of issues. So avoiding that reclining position, instead you can lean forward onto pillows. If you're doing work at a desk, lean forward, keep your feet flat on the floor, or even better, sit on a birth ball so you're not tempted to recline back in your nice comfy desk chair. I try not to sit in recliners very often, just keeping your body lean forward, good posture, good shoulder posture. Right now I'm actually sitting on a pillow while I'm filming this video, so I'm not tempted to lean back and arch and around my back. So keeping good posture, avoiding that reclined back position, very, very important here later on in pregnancy. Number three, the forward leaning inversion. This is a famous spinning babies technique that I started with my first pregnancy and I've continued throughout each of my subsequent pregnancies. They're actually really fun to do and you will actually look forward to doing them as you progress through your pregnancy. What they actually do is untwist the ligaments of the uterus. When you're in this position, your uterus is allowed to hang freely. And then when you come out of this position is what actually is doing the 
good here. Um, so it's not actually the inversion, it's actually the coming out of the inversion that's doing all of the work, all of the stretching, all the loosening of those ligaments that hold the lower uterus tight. So when we have that posture or when we've had sudden jerks and twists, if you've ever been in, if you've been in a recent car wreck or recent injury, you could have twisted ligaments and doing four leaning versions helps with all of that. So this is one I highly, highly, highly recommend starting around 20 weeks. My midwife has always recommended doing these at 20 weeks. So that's what I've done. I love doing them. I do them every day. I do three of them holding for three deep breaths. Number four, if y'all been around my channel, this one's obvious, nourishing your body with good, true foods that come from the earth and mineral rich drinks. I'm actually sipping on a mineral rich drink right now, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but y'all know I'm always talking about eating foods straight from the source, foods that are not processed, foods that are in their rawest, most purest form. I think that is so important for pregnancy and birth and just the postpartum time, just nourishing your body and keeping your minerals properly balanced. I have lots of videos on that that I'll link below if you want some more information on what I personally eat and drink during pregnancy and even not in pregnancy. So check those out if you're more interested, but just that's kind of an obvious one, but it's often sometimes hard to do, especially when you're pregnant. I know sometimes food is hard to for women to deal with early in pregnancy. What I want to point out though is beef liver. I've heard so many testimonies of mamas who are so nauseous. They have so many food aversions. They start adding beef liver into their diet, either in the capsule form or the raw form. Beef liver shots, y'all see me do it on the channel before, and their nausea just disappears. I had a friend who personally testified this to me just last week. She'd been dealing with some nausea actually later in pregnancy, on into her second trimester, and she had not been keeping up with her beef liver capsules regularly. She added them back and was very adamant on taking her capsules every day, and the nausea diminished drastically. So. Whole foods straight from the source, as pure as possible, mineral rich, good quality drinks will help you so much in pregnancy and on into labor and the postpartum time. Number five, piggybacking right off of the nutrition is my pregnancy supplement routine. I've talked about my supplements on this channel. I have an entire video talking about the supplements I take during pregnancy. So you can check that one out, but I think that is so important in preparing our bodies for growing a human and keeping our mineral stores up during pregnancy, we dump 10% of our mineral stores to our baby during pregnancy. 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but it really, really is. If you're 10% depleted in your mineral stores, you're gonna feel fatigued, low energy, can cause some nausea, just headaches, all kind of side effects when you're minerally nutritionally depleted. So that's where those supplements come in to fill those gaps. Because we can't always get everything we need from our nutrition, 150 years ago we could but the way our environment is the toxicity of our soil our water it's just not possible these days so supplementation is pretty much necessary in some form i'm also just now adding in my gbs group b strep protocol which i will have more coming out in a future video but basically it's just a probiotic and a garlic i take two cloves of garlic orally just kind of chew them up that kind of will help to be more preventative at fighting off group b strep I actually opt out of testing will opt out of testing for that and take more of a risk-based approach but um that's kind of just part of my supplement routine that i wanted to mention here and a good quality probiotic for fighting off and being proactive against getting group b strep so that is what usually is one of the popular topics later in the third trimester is group b strep testing your provider will probably want you to test for that so way to be proactive is garlic and probiotics Number six, good old Nora T. So here is my Nora T right here. And Nora stands for nettle, oat straw, red raspberry leaf, and alfalfa. It's four really powerful herbs. They're fantastic in pregnancy. This is just another one of those things I use instead of a, a prenatal pill to help me in pregnancy. So each of those herbs are very beneficial to pregnant mamas, really any woman in the fertility season, whether she is trying to conceive, she is pregnant, or she is in the postpartum time, nursing time. These four herbs are fantastic. And I have an entire Instagram reel where I talk more about Nora T, how I make it, the benefits of it. So I'll link that little reel down below for y'all if you wanna watch that. Nora T will optimize your mineral absorption. I've talked about that before. Mineral absorption is so important in pregnancy. Guard against anemia, maximize liver absorption. Just so many benefits of drinking a Nora T. It's mineral rich. I just make the tea and then add a splash of maple syrup to sweeten it. You can also add lemon. It is absolutely delicious to sip on throughout the day. I drink about a quart of this day.
And a little added tip, this helps me sleep phenomenally and keeps me from having to get up in the middle of the night and pee. If you're a mama in the third trimester, you know how frustrating that can be getting up multiple times throughout the night to pee. If I skip drinking this one day, I completely realize it at 3 a.m. in the morning when I'm having to get up and go to the bathroom. I'm immediately regretting not drinking my Nora tea for the day if I accidentally miss a day. So I'm very, very adamant about drinking this every day for the sleep, better sleep that it gives me. Number seven, chiropractic care. I have gone on and on and on about chiropractic care in this pregnancy. I did not have chiropractic care in my last two pregnancies. I can completely tell a difference in the way my body feels. I've not had any aches and pains, none of those, no sore back, no sore ligaments. It's just phenomenal. So not only is it good for the mama during pregnancy, but it's also great in preparing baby to get into that optimal position. As I mentioned before, when our ligaments are twisted or tight on the uterus, it does not allow baby to properly settle down into the optimal birth position. So with regular chiropractic care, especially at the end of pregnancy, if you're not gonna do it throughout the entire pregnancy, I highly advise looking into it the last six to eight weeks. I have actually been doing chiropractic care since I was six weeks pregnant and it was been phenomenal, but that is not in your budget. Aim for the last six to eight weeks if you will see so many benefits for your body, for the comfort of pregnancy, especially as baby grows and puts more pressure on the, that back and just a much smoother labor. I've heard so many testimonies of mamas who had chiropractic care weekly in pregnancy and their labor was just so quick. So we'll see how that goes. My last labor was pretty quick as well. So we'll see how this one goes with the continued chiropractic care, but it has just been phenomenal for this pregnancy. So I cannot recommend it enough for pregnant mamas. When I say chiropractic care, I'm not talking about any chiropractor. I'm talking about the chiropractors that specialize in prenatal Webster chiropractic care. There is a difference there. They should be started that in treating prenatal patients and um, even better if you can find one that specializes in nervous system chiropractic care. So just a few little tips to add there. I don't go to just any chiropractor. We actually just got this chiropractor in our area. It's been, it was such a blessing that she moved to our area right at the beginning of my pregnancy. So that was totally a God thing that she moved here and was able to, has been able to treat me through my entire pregnancy, but chiropractic care, phenomenal. Number eight, crawling on your hands and knees. So this is actually a new one for me. I had just in the last month or two been learning about the benefits of our nervous system of actually crawling, the mood enhancing that it gives, and then even more so recently, I learned the benefits of it during the latter part of pregnancy. Again, all of this is about getting baby into optimal position, preparing the body for optimal labor positions. It's gonna look crazy, especially at the end of pregnancy when you have that big old belly, but just trust me, it will help just loosen those ligaments again. It's just one more way to help baby move down into the pelvis, move down in your uterus, keep your uterus flexible, loosen, not twisted, and it really does help. Um, it's actually just really fun and relaxing. My kids love to do it with me. I have two toddlers, so we'll just crawl around in circles in our playroom, and it's really a fun game for them, and it's helping my body get baby ready for labor. Number nine, this is a popular one, but eating dates. I've always loved dates. I use that as an excuse to eat more dates in pregnancy, but dates are a way to help ripen the cervix, help release hormones, estrogen and progesterone, which help ripen and dilate the cervix. So they're very, very, very beneficial at the end of pregnancy. There's tons and tons of research out there about dates, but I've always eaten them and will continue to eat them because I love them and I think they help. So why not? So number 10, last but certainly not least, spending time in prayer with God. So I talked a lot in my last labor story video with my daughter about how God was so present and just in awe of how he met me during that birth and just spending time with him talking about what my wishes are for this birth. I think he cares about the little things. So things like having my children be at my birth, that's, that's important to me. So it may not happen, but it's something that I've talked with him about and prayed about. And that's just one of the wishes that I hope will happen. And I think he cares about the little things and it's not like a little checklist wish list. And if you don't get it, you're going to be mad at God about it, but just talking with him and letting him know that he already knows our expectations and our wants for birth and anything in life. But I think just expressing that and voicing it to him is important. And of course, if something doesn't happen, the what for exactly how I'll pray about, it, I'm not going to be like let down, but I think that it is important to talk with God about it and just kind of 
settle in and get ready to meet him during birth and labor because I think he is there throughout the entire thing. Again, I talked a lot about that in my last birth video with my daughter, how beautiful it was, how in awe I was at his wonder at how he made our bodies to give birth and bring children into this world. So that's another thing I've been focusing on really heavily here in these last weeks of pregnancy. It's just a special time with me and him. So those are the 10 things I'm personally doing to prepare my body for this labor. Let me know if you tried any of these things or if you have anything to add for us to try at the end of pregnancy to prepare our bodies for labor. I think it's so important to prepare for this time. Be so researched in this topic. More researched than you are about picking out the nursery colors, picking out specific outfits for your baby. Know about birth. Think about how to prepare your body for birth. That is very, very important. It's often overlooked in pregnancy. So spend some time in your pregnancy preparing your body for birth please subscribe i share lots of other pregnancy related content that you won't want to miss out on thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in a future one